darkness, immense pressure, nothingness, or so it seems. In fact, there is something down here. Wait, there is life here. Here, in the deep ocean abyss, the phylum Tinophora makes its home. This hostile environment is home to many species of underwater creatures that resemble the stuff of nightmares. But Tinophores are a welcome sight to the eyes. They are bioluminescent, casting beautiful rainbow rays of light into the abyss around them. The water here is incredibly cold, and the pressure incredibly high. So how exactly does this unusual animal survive? Tinophores, commonly known as comb jellies, yes, like a hair comb, are simple, transparent marine animals. There's not many of them, only around 100 or so known species, and it's hard to tell even then how many there really are because tinophores are hard to spot. They seem harmless, but tinophores are actually carnivorous, except for one tiny parasitic species of tinophores. They are not big, scary meat eaters like other carnivores, but they do eat a lot of plankton. Although they look like jellyfish, they move and eat much differently. While jellyfish have stinging cells, tinophores have gluey cells called coloblasts on a set of tentacles that help them stick to prey or crawl along the ocean floor. Some of these deep dwellers use their coloblasts to stick to sponges and starfish. Not all tinophores live at the bottom of the ocean. They can be found from the benthic zone to surface waters. Across the globe, too, from the poles to the tropics. And those shiny rainbow ribbons? Those help them swim. The ribbed lines you see are called teens, or fused row of cilia. As these cilia move around to help propel them through the water, the scattered light reflects off them. Tinophores are actually the largest animals that move using cilia. But wait, you're probably wondering. These pretty, seemingly harmless animals are called comb jellies, but they're not actually jellyfish? Yeah, it can be confusing. Take this jellyfish from the phylum Cnidaria. It starts from an egg that was fertilized in the water, develops into a little planula, and then forms a sessile polyp that often looks like someone just took a baby jellyfish and shoved it upside down into the sand. The polyp buds and larvae break off and grows into a medusa. The medusa is what most think of when they picture a jellyfish, radially symmetrical, with the bell and tentacles protruding from underneath. This is much different from tinophores. Tinophores have only two tentacles and have a much more spherical central body. It can be difficult to see these structures since these animals are mostly transparent. Because this is Auburn and we're a basketball school, we're going to use that as our analogy for a tinophore structure. Imagine a basketball with two pieces of net on either side. The lines in the basketball are the rows of teens on the tinophore, the strings are the tentacles, and the valve hole is like the mouth of the tinophore, except there's another hole on the opposite end for the anal pores. Imagine a tube running through the middle of the ball, connecting the mouth and anal pores. In the middle of this is the pharynx, which digests the food after it enters the mouth. The basketball is the body of the tinophore, and the thin netting on either side is a good example of how thin the tinophore tentacles are. On the other hand, jellyfish have a combined mouth and anus, and they can use their mouth to help propel them through water. Tinophores catch food with their tentacles, just like jellyfish. However, tinophore tentacles simply stick on their prey, while Nideria tentacles use stinging nidocytes to paralyze prey. There is a big difference between being trapped in sticky glue and being electrocuted. Despite their differences, tinophores and Nidereans eat mostly the same prey. Comb jellies eat mostly plankton, fish larvae, and even other comb jellies. Jellyfish eat lots of zooplankton as well and aren't afraid to chow down on a tinophore or another jellyfish. The jellies of the sea might seem to live in harmony, but that doesn't mean they're related to how you might think. The phylogeny of tinophores has been recently disputed. We'll discuss that in a little bit. This phylogenetic tree from phylotes shows that tinophora actually branched off much earlier than previously thought, 
meaning that they are older than the sponges in phylum periphera, the jellyfish in Nideria, the simple plactosomes, and us, the bilaterians. Or are they? Why is it so hotly contested that tenophores are the oldest animals? Periphera is the phylum of sponges. Sponges are very simple animals and only have a cell level of organization. They don't have circulatory, respiratory, digestive, or nervous systems, and only need water to live. Because they lack the complexity of other phyla in the kingdom Animalia, it's long been thought that periphera evolved before other animals. Plactosomes were also considered to be the most simple animals, but nuclear ribosomal studies concluded that they still evolved later than tenophores and peripherans. A 2008 study from Casey Dunn at Brown University sequenced genes from several phyla within Animalia and found that tenophora did come first. Ever since then, it's been mayhem within the scientific community trying to declare whether sponges are the oldest, as always thought, or if tenophores did come first, which would upturn a century of evolutionary thought on animals. Tenophores have a digestive system, a nervous system, and a simple muscular system, so they have a tissue level of organization more complex than sponges. However, a paper from Auburn's very own Dr. Ken Hellenic says that one issue with evolutionary argument is assuming all animals evolved from simple to complex. This simply isn't the case. Sponges are associated with channel flagellates, but so are many other animal groups as well, so sponges aren't uniquely simple. Genomic sequencing of tenophore embryos, in a study done by Andy Bexavinis at the National Human Genome Research Institute, found that tenophores are the most basal animals. The simplicity of sponges is explained by sponges having a more complex ancestor and then lost these structures over time. But this leaves a big question. Did nervous and muscular systems evolve once? twice, or did tenovores develop these systems entirely separately? This is a question Dr. Hellenic and biologists around the world are still trying to answer. The jury is still out on whether sponges or comb jellies are truly the most basal animals, but biologists are working hard to get a verdict soon. These tiny animals may not seem like much, but they are so important. Tenophores have turned evolutionary history upside down, those still remain elusive and enigmatic. We don't have all the answers yet, but these beautiful creatures are sure to keep the attention of biologists for years to come.